Hi, I'm Marty Duda. Welcome to the 13th floor. Today, we are very excited. We've got two special guests up here. Uh, it is Julia Parnell, who is the director of the film about the chills. The official title of the film is... The Triumph and Tragedy of Martin Phillips. And next to you is indeed Martin Phillips of the chills. Apparently in my triumph phase post the triumph and tragedy, I think. Yeah. <laughs> good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad I caught you in the triumph phase. That's good. Uh, so I thought before we get into talking about the film and about the making of it and all that, we'd show a little bit just so for folks who haven't seen it because it's about to premiere in a, in a little bit. So let's take a look at a few seconds, uh, which includes, I believe it's Neil Finn talking about the chills as well. So we'll look at that and then we'll come back in a second. Sometimes in isolated places, amazing things can happen because you sort of believe that, well, maybe no one will ever hear this, so we might as well just do what the hell we want. I remember being terrified the first time I had to get on stage. You're just not really on any level. And then suddenly the drummer's counting off the first song and you just kind of have to do it. And there are people looking at you and expecting things. It's traumatic. But at the end of the night, it's the biggest buzz you've ever had, and you want more of it. We encountered Martin and his music very early on. I was pretty taken with the sound of the band, and um, Martin had such an individual style, both musically but also personally. There was kind of a sense of longing, there was a little bit of alienation lurking, but also a certain joyous embrace of all of those things. Okay, we're back here with Julia and Martin. Um, Martin, when you see a clip like that of somebody like Neil Finn talking about your music and you, how does that make you feel? Um, it's kind of different with Neil because we actually do go back a long way. Um, you know, not, not super, we're not, super close friends we don't hang out or anything right. but he's been there for me uh when a lot of people kind of walked away and so has always kind of believed to me and that's and that's been so that's important and i'm really pleased he's in the documentary kind of especially for an international audience kind of putting a perspective on the dunedin thing and where that all came from right because for outsiders that's that's baffling they've, yeah. they've never heard of dunedin never heard of the chills and somebody with international status to kind of ease them into the story was really crucial uh. Yeah. Now, Julia, I, I guess the first obvious question is, how did you come about the idea? Why did you want to make this film? Well, I was actually approached by Martin's record label in the UK, called Fire Records, Fire, yeah. and they had started making a documentary about Martin, a sort of a relatively simple piece that right. was an interview with Martin, was some really cool live footage of him performing. I'm solo in London and a little bit of archive. But they were struggling to kind of take it to the next level for myriad reasons. And I make a lot of New Zealand music documentaries, so they approached me. And that was cool. And I was looking at that um, potential, it's not easy to get anything funded. You know, I mean, yeah, anything. Yeah. I'm not saying, you know, it's just, you got to really, really work hard. Fair enough. But right. you got to work really hard. So you got to wait till the right thing comes along to really put your energy in. And I was in Dunedin doing another film, strangely enough, and was given the opportunity to meet Martin. So just to kind of advance those discussions, sat down, with him, walked into the cafe, and I just really felt something. It was sort of like, I don't know. He said, oh, hundreds of people, you know, lots of people. I think it's like six people, six, six. There have been numerous attempts at making a documentary over the years, right. and so, I was initially, yeah, a wee bit standoffish, <laughs> but I quickly came to understand that Judy was very serious about it and not just rattling off something quickly, but really getting to the the heart of the story, including things I wasn't going to be happy with. Right. And so we were going to have to be very honest with each other. And yeah, because yeah, yeah. you know I don't want to, as I say, it's this making a TV documentary, but the, to do a feature film. The funding that's required and the level of audience you have to prove it's a you know a very rigorous process to have a film funded and personally as a filmmaker you know i you know i love rock documentary I, I, i'm you know right in the middle of making a massive music series you know music's my bag right but it was about finding a connection that's human it's about what's the personal story what's the dramatic question what is it and martin started to tell me a little bit more about where he was actually at in his life and it wasn't really necessarily a good place. Right. 
So I sort of walked in to make a documentary where um, it was life or death. Yeah. And that changed everything and really took the idea of a documentary and as worthy as the chills are, as worthy as Martin is, just the music alone and the banders of a film, to really make a feature film, you need a big story. Yeah. And well, Martin had much one. bigger than the big, I mean, it pretty much opens up with you being told you have like six months to live or something. Uh, that's pretty. I it. smile, but it wasn't that funny no. at the time. <laughs> I mean, when you watch that, and I've seen the film and it's just like, whoa. Um, how did you get to the point where you could allow yourself to be filmed while all this was going on? Well, we almost stumbled into it because we were going for my uh, most recent checkup, kind of expecting the usual watch the drink, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And so we were all caught out and that threw the entire um, concept of what the documentary was going to be into a different angle. Um, that was when the serious discussions about how honest am I going to be came into it and um, yeah. what we had to achieve in quite possibly a very short amount of time in terms of uh, getting rid of all things I owned, um, fronting up to former band members and, right. and so on. We brought um, up a lot of stuff, didn't it? It did. But yeah. I always think is the, light, the thing that Martin said on that day after coming home from the doctor's appointment is, I can't believe that I'm sitting here surrounded by things gathering dust. Right. That the sum total of my career. You know, so I think that really p put those things together, didn't it? There his immense, immense collections yes. <laughs> in his home with your health, with this desire that maybe it's time to kind of front up and talk to some people that have been spun off the juggernaut that was the chills and it's time. So those three things just really started to make sense, didn't they? Yeah, it did. Well, and that's what you wanted to do. Yeah, I'd, my only stipulations were that I was allowed to at least point out if it was factually, factually inaccurate right. and that I would not interfere with other other people's memories of events. Even if, even if, even if I could actually even prove they were wrong <laughs> and, it and it clashed with my story, it was not, it's not my role to go back and try and alter people's memories because right. that, that's so much the fabric of their lives now as, as became apparent when the interviews started coming through, these people are still um, impacted by their time with the chills right. so um, and that just as a little aside that is something which has hit the new band the current band what you know I say current the 15 to 20 years, years with yeah. me with the, the realization that these people that who are only names and then that they've seen them on the film now mm. and uh, that they you know that it's a it's a big part of their lives that um, it's made the new band aware of the weight of carrying forward the the, the chills story even more than they were, which is which is quite important. Mm. So, was viewing the film and making taking part in the film like therapeutic? Did it change you? It, I think it really has actually. Um, I was unaware of some of the awful communication or miscommunications and communication difficulties. Um, that's something I'd take issue with that I'm not 100% responsible for that. Right. We had, in theory, we had good management around us, other people in the industry who could have said, you, got, you guys really yeah. should be talking and getting over the stuff. But, you know, at the end of the day, I was head of the band and I'll take responsibility for that. So there were, open, there were wounds being opened all around and I think largely it's been a really good healing, healing process. Yeah. Um, and just... One of the things was I knew this was my last chance to get any say, any control or say over the story being told correctly, mm -hmm. and digging deeply into the archives took a long time and was also quite revealing. But I, I was the only person who could have said this is this 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 goes here in yeah. the story. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it was important that as as grueling as it was, it's been three a three year process um, to get that done has just been really quite wonderful. Mm -hmm. And let's talk a bit about how you saw putting together the film and the style or the, the actual nuts and bolts of it, how did you approach the making of the film? Well, I mean, it is a, you know, it, it's, a, it's a process, but we decided to, on a technical level, film it with a sort of a floating camera. So mm -hmm. it's quite a fluid approach. Um, 
Martin, we spend a lot of time with Martin, just us in his home. So that would be just a DOP, Tim Flower, and a sound operator, and myself. Mm -hmm. So just a three, so just the four of us going through Martin's things and really using the items as like a um, device to go back in time. And that was that's alongside interviews. Again, quite fluid interviews with past band members and so on. Um, but I like to think there was one day, and I'm sure Tim Flower would agree with me, there was one day where we um, shot a live performance with Martin and it was the first time, and it was just in his music room, and um, we talked as he was setting up and it was still very rel relatively early in the process of dealing with the health problems. And that performance just said, to me, we're making the right film right. in this way because it was the intimacy of the performance alongside the um, speaking directly to us or speaking to the universe in some ways. I'd say, just talk to the universe, you don't have to talk to me. <laughs> but um, with me asking questions, right. that it's suddenly the music and the words together just suddenly, suddenly felt right. Um, and I think there's a clip that I've given you. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's take a, let's a, take a look at the clip idea. now because this is, and it shows kind of how you, exactly what you talked about. So we'll watch that and then we'll come back and talk some more. I'm just the pleaser You sure look pleased I'm just the pleaser taxi driver and you get driven around I'm just the taxi driver you get driven around the entertainer Okay, so uh, that was what, The Entertainer is what it's called? Yeah, that's actually a bit later on in the film. It's quite a dark moment, right. if you can tell, by watching <laughs> the clip. But it is that sense of, of just, I mean, I just, how you could turn up and just be so open in front of the camera, just time and time again. So it's shot for so long. It's just really inspiring. Do you know what was going on in your head when that was being shot? <laughs> That's um, always what I'm wondering. <laughs> good question. It has been kind of an overwhelming uh, couple of years, so I'm not sure. Because at the same time, we have been, would have been preparing for our trip overseas, which yeah. we've just completed, and uh, and possibly the record, even recording the last album may have been around that time as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, extraordinary amount going on, <laughs> and obviously all the positives and negatives because there's such an, a, a reawakening of interest in the chills at the moment, and that's great. Mm. Um, very daunt daunting demands, like doing a, a 20 plus date tour of the States recently. I was just not even sure if my voice would hold out these days, right. and it did. Right. So now we've kind of, we're much more confident um, between the impact of that tour and the movie, just things that are falling to place like they haven't for, you know, a quarter century. It's quite extraordinary. It's pretty exciting. Phenomenal. So you did South by Southwest, is that right? Yeah. That's right, and Rolling Stone magazine said, in many ways, the chills dominated South by Southwest 2019. Which is <laughs> That's not bad. <laughs> and there's a lot of stuff going on at South by Southwest. <laughs> I mean, I think it was because the film premiered there as well. Yeah. So I think it was just a, it was a perfect storm to have us both have us both there, but yeah. to have the have the band just playing out of their skin. I mean, I went to every show, hustling, handing out flyers, come to our movie. Yeah. But um, <laughs> they were just playing so well. The power of you know the power and the glory really, and um, then you know just great um, support for the film. So it just felt like the right way to launch the movie into the world. Right. 
So what are the plans for the film? It's going to be previewed? Yep, so we've Dunedin. got a, a gala red carpet premiere in Dunedin, of course. Certainly. Because where else would you do it, let's be honest. <laughs> at, at the beautiful Regent Theatre, which is one of the last of the beautiful theatres in New Zealand. Right. So, so And yeah. it's a big venue, so it means that we can invite the, the whole community. So tickets are on sale for that, which is quite rare for a premiere. And there's going to be performances and things, and Martin and I will do a Q&A, so it'll be a really special event. And then it'll be public release from the 2nd of May around the country. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so hopefully <laughs> people go exciting. see it. I don't know. <laughs> And do you see it being shown outside of New Zealand much? Yeah, well, hopefully we've, 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 we're having some interest from um, other festivals around the world. So right. they've got a couple of approaches that are just being worked out at the moment. So, of course, hopefully we want to be um, having an Australian premiere and, and the UK and Ireland. But a lot of that in the film business, it is about kind of one step at a time. Right. So you'll do your film festivals and start to get some traction with that. And we've got a sort of a sales person internationally who will be working to try and sell it on to a distributor. So it's all just like, yeah, yeah. you're on the train. <laughs> you have to see where it takes you. <laughs> Not a huge amount of control, to be honest. And then the chills, are you going to be touring around? Or are you going to be, what's uh, the plan? Yeah, well, the plan at the moment is for Erica, our violinist, guitarist, keyboardist, to successfully have her second child okay. in about a month. <laughs> first things first. So um, <laughs> that it works well because it gives us a kind of a few months stand down while we focus on the movie and work out about our music festivals for the band later in the year, probably returning to um, UK, Europe, maybe back to the States again. Mm -hmm. But generally, just there are offers coming in now which are really very healthy nice so that's good yeah. all right so we have one more clip to show when we go out which is a little segment a sequence in the film kind of features pink frost which i remember because when i saw the screening and is early on in the film and just hearing that i mean i've heard the song before but it was just like sitting in the theater hearing it in there and just going what a magnificent sound that is uh, you know the the, the vibe that, that uh, creates and uh, uh, I'm wondering if you can just give us a couple of thoughts about the making of that and the writing of it or the, the hearing it again. Uh, how does it make you feel? Uh, well, one of the best things I think about this movie is hearing the Chills music in, in that kind of um, situation with beautiful shots of the very environments that inspired some of that music, like the Otago Peninsula, like Lake Hawea. It's just like, yes, there's your explanation. <laughs> right. I just see this, yeah. this is what caused it. Yeah. It's pretty Excellent. fun to shoot that. So yeah, I'll bet. Sure. <laughs> well, thank you guys for stopping by. Thank thank you. Uh, hopefully yeah. everybody will come out and see the film. And uh, we'll see you guys around. Thanks very much. Thanks, Marty. When I listen to Pink Frost, I can definitely hear me as a young man starting to interact seriously with the natural environment of Dunedin, the Otago Peninsula, that sort of low, thunderous noise of surf. Just the recognition that the land itself was alive has always fed into the nature of my music. Pink Frost by the chills, oh, it's a uh, fine art according to me. It's a remarkable song. It defines a whole sort of year of New Zealand music, I think. There was a sort of experimentalism that that lineup had that was, I think they went to a lot of new places.